So Toxtricity is literally born to be a special attacker. Its move pool is entirely built around that, along with its stats and even its ability, Punk Rock. However, I'm gonna try to make this bad boy a physical sweeper with some weird stuff. It gets the pretty exclusive move Shift Gear, which doubles its speed and also gives it a plus one to its physical attack. For some reason, this thing can also run the ability Technician, allowing its 60 power and under moves to get a 50% boost. We're gonna run Air Balloon to dodge four times effective ground attacks, and once it's popped, we can bust out Thief. Boosted by Technician, along with Terra Dark and Shift Gear, we can actually get some solid damage while also being able to steal the opponent's item. Then we can work with Poison Tail, which is a 50 power stab poison move that benefits from the Technician boost, and also has a high crit ratio for some extra help. It's basically nonsense and not super optimal, but we're gonna get physical talks to confuse the hell out of some people anyways. So look, this may be the very first Toxtricity that's not using the Punk Rock ability, and is it a good idea? Probably not, but that's what I'm all about. If you're into that kind of thing as well, you should probably hit that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, I'd love to have you as part of the journey. And with that, let's go ahead and see if we can get this bad boy to do anything. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the most fire merch imaginable that you can get at the link in the description and look fresh. Just kidding, he actually is going to go ahead and lead off with an Obama Snow, and this Yeti is probably just here to make it snow and then be able to set up an Aurora Veil, but luckily I have the freaking arch nemesis of this thing, the Infernape. Both of my stabs absolutely roast and toast the guy, so I can take this opportunity to just kind of freely set up some Stealth Rock, as of course they do have an easy pivot in the freaking Aloma Mola, a punching bag fish. It's always incredibly annoying, and this thing is, yeah, it's here to regenerate and just be thick as hell. So, I set up my Stealth Rock. At this point, there's nothing I can really touch this thing with, so I'm kind of forced to switch. I imagine they probably go for a flip turn to try to get to some momentum on their side. But I decide I, I kind of just have to go into the Drag Algae here, and at least I can drop some Dracos on stuff. And honestly, this Seahorse does more than you'd expect to think. So they do go for the flip turn, and it's obviously not gonna hurt me, but it's gonna allow them to kind of put me on the back foot a bit in terms of, you know, going into whatever they like. So they're actually gonna end up bringing in the Great Tusk. Now, it's actually kind of good for me because I figured they probably just wanna go for the Rapid Spin. Potentially they Earthquake, but I'm gonna go ahead and roll the dice here, click the Draco Meteor in hopes that they do Rapid Spin, and then I get a huge uh, amount of damage on the guy. So it turns out they're actually gonna go ahead and Stealth Rock instead, which, is also fine, because Mystery's over here just safe. And I go ahead and drop the Draco, and guess what? Folks be sleeping on Adaptability Drag Algae. That is able to grab a nice little clean KO, and that's gonna be able to just take care of the Great Tusk, which is huge, because that thing is not only a big threat to the Toxtricity, but just in general, a freaking menace. So, with that, they now have a Revenge Switch in. They're gonna go ahead and bring in the Roaring Moon, but he's got a team full of threats, everything is scary, and... So I'm mostly worried that this thing is going to try some setup here, but I'm just going to go for the pivot with the flip turn. Turns out they actually go for the Dragon Rush, which is opting for some big old damage, but instead you, you then have to deal with a 75% accuracy, which is just nonsense. So it of course misses, and the flip turn now allows me to safely bring in whatever I'm working with. So here's the thing, I have a lot of options, a lot of, a lot of nonsense on this team that wants to try to get going. So first of all, I'm going to bring in Grumpig. Now, this little guy comes in marching and just looks ridiculous against Roaring Moon. First of all, because obviously I'm a psychic type, but I'm gonna go ahead and commit the Poison Terra. And yes, you're looking at this thing correctly. I am Belch. So, <laughs> here's the thing. I'm gonna try to go for a nasty plot, being able to take an attack. I was supposed to then be able to live like a crunch and then be able to activate a Salic Berry, then allowing me to belch some stuff. And don't worry, you will see some more of this Grumpig potentially later on. But they actually end up switching. Tells me maybe that thing is some type of choice. I do, of course, go for that Poison Terra, so I am now just looking like a ridiculous Poison Pig, and I always love to try to get this thing going. So, first of all, we get that Nasty Plot, doubling the special attack, making us at least able to hit some stuff. And as they bring in the Iron Crown, that's actually not bad for me, because I have the coverage in Earth Power, which you wouldn't expect this thing to be able to summon power from the Earth, but you can, so that's great. Now, they go for the Future Sight, which is going to be very scary in a few turns from now, but... I at least then can get off an Earth Power and do a nice little chunk to the fella because uh, Iron Crown is a damn monster. And now realizing I, first of all, probably am in range to just die from a Psychic here, but then, you know, Future Sight later on is going to home me. So I want to try to maybe save the Grum Pig for later, see if I can get it to do some stuff. And I just have the safe switch into the uh, Iron Jugulus. So. Friggin' Robot Cyber High Dragon does come in. I get my booster energy, which is gonna make me fast. A little built-in Choice Scarf action. 
But they actually end up going for the Volt Switch, so they make the nice pivot play. He's gonna do a bunch of damage instead of the not very or the ineffective Psychic. And now I have to deal with whatever they want to bring in. So they go right back into Roaring Moon, which is, first of all, I'm like, okay, this is kind of fine. I know that I'm faster because I have that plus one speed uh, with the booster energy. So I'm going to try to land a big ol' hurricane on the guy and at least do some nice chunk. But instead, they actually are going to be choice scarves. So they are able to get the U-turn off first. Does at least reveal that that thing is going to be scarf. So I know kind of at least what that thing's working with. And as I do lose Jugulus, that's kind of fine because it forces them to go ahead and switch into whatever they want and then I can decide to match up accordingly. So as they go into Zapdos, one good thing that our boy Toxtricity has going for him here is that I know I can take any any attack from uh, a Zapdos here. Also, we, all, we have the element of surprise in that even as I go for a shift gear here, it's kind of what these things do anyway, so they don't know that I'm going to be physical quite yet. So Zapdos was much more afraid of a special attacking, you know, Toxtricity, but I'm going to try to set up as much as I can here uh, and be able to catch some folks by surprise. So I go for that shift gear. I get that nice little doubled speed and the attack boost, which most of the time doesn't do anything for this. But since I'm physical, we need all the attack boosts we can possibly get. So with my gears about shifted as hell, I am faster than Iron Crown, and then I can go for a thief, which is able to take care of it. <laughs> I also do still have my uh, air balloon intact, so I don't steal the item necessarily, but I still just kill him with a thief. And first of all, guys, probably like, what the hell did that thing just click on me? I don't know. But I take care of the crown, and now they're able to bring in the Alomomoa. So first of all, I know that this fish is obviously in danger. They, they are imag I'm imagining they probably go for that terror, which they definitely are going to commit here. Now, with the defensive terror incoming, I'm kind of free to just go for another shift here. Not only because I know that I'm not going to be able to do much to it, depending on what it wants to turn into as it goes to the dragon, but also I know that this thing can't really hit me that hard in return. That's one of the good things about a Loma Mola, at least, is that it's pretty relatively easy to set up on, and it doesn't do much, you know, in return. So I go for another shift here. I now have plus two attack and plus four speed, as Buddy is absolutely zooming out here. They're going to end up going for the flip turn. Probably one of the only ways this thing can hit me, and now, sadly, it can actually at least come back in with more freaking health because that thing just be regenerating. So, at least the good news is, as they go into the <laughs> Roaring Moon, I know that the thing's Scarf, but I also have literally plus four speed, so I am going to be faster. That allows me to then go for the Poison Tail, busting out moves that nobody ever uses, and that is going to take care of it. So, uh, killing a Scarf Roaring Moon is always great, and... As that thing goes down, it does at least open the door for freaking Aloma Mola to come back in. And again, I, every time I see this on Team Preview, I just know that this thing's going to be an asshole. So first of all, I'm going to go for the Poison Tail. Not only is there a high crit chance, but also it has a chance to poison. Sadly, I don't get either, which is fine because I do a nice little chunk to the thing. And the funniest part is if I was a special attacking uh, regular Toxicity, I'd actually be in a much better spot. That, that's the way it goes with <laughs> this set sometimes. So I know that as they go for the Wish, I imagine they probably want to protect here. And I'm like, that's fine. I'm just going to then go for another shift gear, maxing out my speed. And now at least I have plus three attack. And we're starting to be able to do some big damage to stuff as um, Toxicity is hilarious. Now, good thing is that as they flip turn again, my air balloon is gone. So the next time I can thief something, I'm actually going to be able to steal their item, which is always fun for me in being able to maybe get something useful from some stuff. So they're running out of options to be able to pivot into. And as they bring in the Obama Snow, this thing is looking at the fastest thing known to mankind. Wish is going to come true, but he's already full health, so that's fine. And now I can just go for that Poison Tail. They don't have any Terras, but they do have priority with the Ice Shard, which I'm actually just barely able to live, which is amazing. And then Poison Tail is going to knock his ass to the Shadow Realm, and down goes the Obama Snow before it's able to get up Aurora Veils, which is exactly what you like to see. And now as they're able to go again back into the damn fish, this thing is... I'm in a position where at least I do have some health left, but we know that this thing's Rocky Helmet and I will die to the recoil. But I'm going to go for another Poison Tail here thinking, hey, if I get the crit, I can kill here. High crit chance, it doesn't happen, of course. It's because why would it when I need it to? So I do at least knock myself out from the Rocky Helmet, which is fine because Toxtricity went on a nice little tear. Able to show off some total nonsense. But um, now I can just go into whatever I like here and I'm thinking who wants to at least try to finish this off. Now they do have two Mons left. It's going to be the Alomomola along with the damn Zapdos. So a couple of thick fellas left. I decide to go into the Drag Algae just because I know I can take hits from this thing. I also Draco Meteor 
it's not going to be good for either of them. And dropping adaptability Dracos is kind of just what this thing does. He sticks around for a while with an assault vest and then just hits harder than you imagine. So they do decide to pivot right back into Zapdos. Doesn't take Stealth Rock because it is heavy duty boots. But I'm able to do well over half, at least with the Draco Meteor here. Sadly, with the drop, I'm not going to be able to grab the kill. So then I'm like, you know who actually has a nice time switching into this? Our boy Drillionaire. This thing is a uh, lightning rod, so it can't hit me on the electric side. Also, it probably only has like heat wave for coverage. So Rhydon's actually a pretty good answer to this. Uh, I bring in the fella. And then Zapdos is like, hey, you actually, you mind if I land here? I'm going to take a little rest. They go for the roost, which is annoying because it gets all the health back. Um, but then they realize that this thing cannot touch the Rhydon. <laughs> And Stone Edge is going to do a whole lot to the thing. Even I don't care how defensive your Dorito pointy bird is, it's going to hurt. So they actually swap. They're going to go back into the Aloma Mola. And at this point, as they used to have some freaking longevity out of their walls, they're like probably running out of resources here. This thing is around half after the Stealth Brock. I do connect on the Stone Edge, but it doesn't kill it because it, this thing doesn't die. And as they're looking at it, they do have a flip turn to hit me hard with. But uh, at this point, all I have to do is connect on Stone Edges and right, right on freaking brings it home for us. So they're going to head out, and that is going to be the end of the match. So I thought that was just a ridiculous one against a scary team. And you already know we have another one for you because we got to get the Toxicity going again. Now's a good time to ask if you've stuck around this far, you should probably just hit that like button because it helps out the channel. And let's go ahead and jump into it. So this time, my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Gliscor. And as I toss out the Infernape, it's kind of good telling me this is the lead Gliscor because it gives me a little bit of context in terms of this is probably here for Stealth Rock and it's more than likely more of a defensive fellow with like Toxic and Protect and just there to be the annoying Gliscor that everything is. So they go for the Protect turn one because they want to ensure that I don't get a knockoff to get rid of that Toxic Orb, which is always extremely satisfying, but I don't have it anyway. So I just go for that Stealth Rock here, which is always nice. And I don't really have much to hit this thing with. Now, as they get the Toxic Orb, I imagine they probably just want to set up rocks of their own. So I'm like, you know what I can do here? I'm going to go for a little overheat action. I am a mixed Infernape and my mixed tape is fire and I'm a mixed ape. And I am here to go for overheats to just nuke stuff. So it, it does do a nice chunk to the Glyco, which is always great. It, it will get that back in like a turn and a half of fucking Toxic Heal. But it's fine because as they go for the Stealth Rock here, Big Meaty Claws... I, it does allow me to live to see another day. Now, worried about the Earthquake, and also with my special attack drop, they have options for just going for Protect here, so I'm going to conserve the Ape, and I decide I'm actually just going to switch into Rhydon here, because I think they probably go for a Protect. As I bring in Rhydon, I then have the option to maybe set up a Swords Dance. I'm Eviolite and Bulky, so I can take attacks and then hit stuff with Stone Edge, and honestly, Rhydon is way better than people think. So, they're going to swap out the Gliscor here. They actually, we got a little double switch action. They're going to go ahead and bring in the Milotic, which is not the type of fellow you want to see as a Rhydon because, yeah, now I'm just in danger of water, and that's not fun. So they do actually get the uh, Flame Orb, so that tells me this thing is going to be there for the Marvel scale to be able to just be absolutely bulky as hell, and I need to get out of there with the Rhydon. So I decide, you know who's a pretty good switch in here? Is actually always a pretty good switch in, unless it's a physical attacker, is freaking the Algae Dragon, who's actually, this thing's not even a seahorse, it's like a, it's based off of a leafy sea dragon, right, or whatever the hell those things are, crazy animal and really cool, I love this Pokemon, but I take attacks all day long, and at this point, I'm just, like, once again, gonna go ahead and drop some Dracos, now, they do stay in and go for Ice Beam, which is super effective, however, I'm wearing a vest, and I'm fashionable, and that allows me to not take that much damage, so, uh, as the Draco Meteor comes through, this thing is way too bulky, good thing is about... I, the burn is while it does help it on its physical defensive side, it does at least still take some chip every turn. And so I'm like, that's fine. Now, I imagine they maybe switch here. So I'm like, I'm going to go for a flip turn. But with my special attack drop, they can just recover right in my face. And my low tick is, uh, again, another defensive bulky water boy that is scary or girl. So I go for that flip turn, allowing me then to switch into whatever I like. And as I'm looking at it here, Toxtricity is afraid of the Gliscor. I, I really, I can't set that thing up at least this early until I know what that thing's working with. So I decide again to just go into the Grumpig. And I'm like, can we get the Belch Grumpig to, <laughs> to get Belch in here? I know that I can take attacks from my low tick and I should be able to nasty plot in this thing's face. So that is the plan as they're like, damn, this Grumpig is a huge threat. They're gonna go ahead and switch that thing out. And that allows me to freely set up a nasty plot, but instead they go into freaking Tinkaton, who, you know, of course, is specially defensive and has, you know, decent defensive capabilities versus me. But again, I do have the Earth Power. So after the Nasty Plot, I'm like, hey, this is good. Now, Grumpig is also the kind of guy who's a little faster than you think. Base 80 is actually not horrible. I'm able to outspeed and get off that Earth Power, which does do a nice little chunk. 
and uh, they sadly go for the knockoff. I was really hoping for no knockoff there because this thing definitely needs its Salic Berry uh, to be able to not only boost its speed, but then allow me to belch. So I'm like, well, damn, you hate to see it. So I just go for another Earth Pirate because it at least is in range for a kill here. Um, but they are just going to make the swap here. They're going to end up switching. They decide to go right back into my low tick, which is actually fine by me because then I'm like, hey, this is, hey, I can get a big damage with an Earth Power, then I outspeed, and then. I have a nice little plus two psychic noise to get off. So I'm like, if I can take care of this Milotic, I will definitely take that in a trade for Grumpig, essentially. So I'm thinking maybe they swap here, but I'm like, I'm just going to go for that psychic noise. I do outspeed, make some crazy, I don't know what psychic noise entails, but some crazy ass noise that's got to hurt. And that takes care of the Milotic. I could have actually stopped it from going for recovers with healing, which almost never happens when I'm using psychic noise. Like the, the secondary effect never ends up working, but... Uh, that takes care of it, which is great. So now as they go back into the Tinkaton, I'm like, hey, you know, I just outspeed you here, and you know the drill. But they do, in fact, have the fake out, to my surprise, and that is going to take care of the Grump Pig. So not Grump Pig's day yet, but I'm telling you, one of these times, it's going to happen. So at this point now, I have a switch into whatever I like. And I'm like, you know what? I might as well just try to get Hendrix going. I have a couple things on my side, first of all, versus ground. And that's because I have an air balloon, so they cannot touch me with ground moves. If they want to go into the things like Glyscore, and then I'm like, I'm just going to start setting up regardless, as uh, this is what this thing does. Plus, Glyscore is not super eager to probably have a good matchup here, because Boom Burst would hurt it. So I'm like, this is, I already have it at like half health. And as they do go into the Glyscore, I'm going to go ahead and start shifting gears. You know the drill. We are punk rock as hell, and can shift our gears for some reason. And that makes me faster immediately than everything they've got, which is great. What turns out to be not as great is the fact that my dumbass is working with a physical toxicity here, which does end up biting me in the ass. So I go for the shift gear, which is because I kind of expected them to go for the protect just to guarantee they can, you know, stall another turn, get some more poison heal. But they actually just end up going for the knockoff. Now, one thing is they definitely need to get rid of my air balloon if they want to, you know, do some ground nonsense to me. So that does pop my balloon, which is fine. And at this point, I'm like, okay, I've got two shift gears up. If I can maybe go for like a Terra Dark and then a Technician Boosted Thief, maybe get close enough for some damage and then also defensively like have a chance against something. But I'm here to get this Toxicity to do stuff. And damn it, that's what I'm going to try to do. So I bust out the Dark Terra. And that's because I definitely need any boost that I can on Thief. And the bad thing about going for a Thief against this thing is because then I'll steal its Toxic Orb. And then I'm like, then I'm just going to get, it's going to be bad. But... They actually end up going for the Protect this turn, which is like, damn it, I should have gone for another Shift Gear. But I was sure that there was going to be an Earthquake coming, but it does not come, and instead, everybody uh, is protecting. Always use protection. So, after more Poison Heal, Glyscore is doing exactly what it does best, and that is just freaking always get way more health than it should. So, at this point, I'm like, well, I've made it this far. I might as well, they saw that I clicked Thief there, and they're probably like, what the hell? Again, nobody knows... <laughs> what I'm cooking with this damn thing, but I'm like, I'm just going to go for another Thief. Uh, but they actually end up swapping here, and that tells me that maybe this thing's moveset is not necessarily ideal for the Toxtricity. So they decide to swap out. They're going to end up bringing in the Hydrapple here, which is actually good for me because Hydrapple is bulky on the special side, so physical, you know, Toxtricity actually has a bit of the upper hand here. And the Thief is going to do a whole bunch. Not only that, but I actually end up stealing this thing's leftovers. So I steal the Apple from the apple guy, which is fun, and now I can just start eating those leftovers. I always think it's hilarious to steal leftovers from something and then just immediately that turn to be like, I'm gonna take a bite of that. That's, yeah, that's delicious. So I have leftovers now, which is great, so I can continue to heal, but also I have the coverage in a poison tail, and I'm like, I, if they don't tear it, that's fine. They do not. I smack them around with my weird poison tail, <laughs> and that takes care of Hydrapple, which is amazing. So killing Hydrapple on the physical side as the tox is, feels great, and uh, at this point, now they can go into whatever they like. So I'm still concerned about the Glyscore, but that play leads me to believe that it's not, it must not have Earthquake coverage, which would be fantastic for me. So, as they bring in the more Pico, more Peko, the freaking emo Pikachu, I outspeed you because I have two shift gears. Even if you're Choice Scarf, a Poison Tail just obliterates the little hamster in a tragic death. And that's amazing because now we're going on a little mini tear here with the, the shifted gears and the physical tox, and all we gotta do is thunder punch something. We're out here using the whole damn set. So, as they now decide to bring in the Tinkaton, they can at least go for the fake out, which we know that this thing has, but I mean, that's not gonna save him long term. So, they do bust out the fake out, which, you know, does a little bit of chip, and I do flinch, but that's fine, because I'm just over here chilling. It's lunchtime, grubbing my apple. I'm honestly having a pretty lovely time here. So, 
I can at least now bust out the Thunder Punch, which is kind of funny because it doesn't benefit from Technician at all, but I Thunder Punch him and it looks like I kick him, so I Thunder Kick him uh, to take care of it. And this thing doesn't get access to any really better physical electric moves, which is annoying. But Thunder Punch is at least able to kill something, so we call that a win in my book. Now, with the Tinkaton gone, they do decide to go back into freaking Gliscor. And I'm like, surely this thing's gonna earthquake me. But, and I'm like, I, I, I can't do, I set this thing up just expecting to be destroyed by a Gliscor. But then I'm like, this is actually ends up working out. So I go for the shift gear here because I'm thinking they definitely protect here. And end up getting the prediction on the protects wrong every time. As I go for the shift gear, uh, they do not protect, which is unfortunate. But it turns out they actually just go for the toxic. So now, I believe we've seen this thing's entire moveset. It's working with Toxic, Protect, Stealth Rock, and Knock Off. So, fully supportive Gliscor comes, ends up biting him in the ass because Toxicity is now feeling pretty safe. You know, being poisoned is fine. I, it does allow him to poison me because I'm Dark type instead of, you know, Poison type. But hey, that actually is fine. I can offset a little bit with some leftovers and not the end of the world. With my newfound breath of life not being afraid of Earthquake, knowing that knockoff is their only damage here, I can just go for a thief and at least just hopefully try to kill this thing with a physical toxicity, which would be hilarious. But now they go for the protect. Every time I click an attack, they're protecting. I guess there was no reason for me not to go for another shift gear there, but I was like, let's get this show on the damn road. I want to, I'm a burglar and I'm looking for some thief action, even though at least with the leftovers, I wouldn't steal this thing's uh, toxic orb, so. That would be end up being good, but I just feel like with the amount of shift gears I have, I'm not going to get that much crazier with what I need to take out the last two mods here. So I do end up going for the Thief here, which they do not protect, or at least the double protect. And uh, it's not going to do enough to quite knock it out, which would have been extremely satisfying, but it doesn't end up working out in my favor. So because Glyscore, this thing surely just max defense. And those big meaty claws are meaty as hell. You you basically, you know the deal. So, good thing is, another thief kills it, but the bad thing is, a protect stops that from happening, and then I die to my poison. So I'm like, this thing still finds a way to absolutely break my balls, not even having the coverage it needs. So as they go for the protect, I do at least shift gear this turn, but then I'm like, I'm pretty sure this toxic racks up and kills me here. My speed will not go higher, but the attack will. Um, but then I can enjoy that boost in the afterlife, because I do die from the poison. So... We are going to accept the noble death in that that Gliscor surely was going to be able to win that matchup, but I got cl I, we almost knocked it out with a <laughs> physical tox, which is, is epic. At least I did get this thing to a point where I can easily revenge kill here as I have a couple different different options. I'm going to bring in the uh, Iron Jugulus, who always, this thing always struggled. I don't know what it is about this. On paper, this thing looks insane, but it just a lot of the time it's just underwhelming, but at least in this situation, I should be able to clean up here because I can, you know, get that speed boost just to ensure that I'm way faster than Buddy. And I can go for that Dark Pulse, which does knock out the buff-ass Zubat, which is satisfying to see. And now their final Mon, knowing in the back, is going to be the Frozmoth. Um, the Jugulus should be able to clean up here. But the one thing this thing does do well, and that's a little late-game cleanup. And that, uh, with that booster energy, you're very fast. And if there's chip on things, especially with, uh, freaking bug ice type taking half... From the Stealth Rocket Flamethrower, should be able to take care of it, and that is gonna do it for the match. So, thank you guys very much for watching, had a lot of fun with this one. I've got a lot of shenanigans uh, that I'm cooking up, so definitely stick around and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.